All right, we are live, guys. Welcome. Welcome to Coach's Corner, my favorite part of the stream. Really, we have an awesome little show here today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the summer, summer burnout issues, recruitment, all that stuff. We might be able to even get through a um, an interview, a mock interview with one of you guys if Dixie's around. Dixie123 or whatever your name was. Um, so hopefully, we'll be able to do that. Yes, it is Coach's Corner. I love this. I love it. We have an awesome overlay, thanks to Whammo. Super happy about that. What else is in the news? Last night, somebody outbid me 200,000 gold for Dreadnought Pants. They spent a lot of money on a transmog they couldn't use. It was pretty hilarious. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's thanks to Amochin. It's really, really cool. I, I love it. I love it. It's my new permanent overlay. It's amazing. And yeah, we have new emotes. We have the Ash Rip emote. For those of you, I mean, whatever. I mean, somebody dies in game, obviously. Uh, XCOM player dies. We also have a new, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, XCOM player dies. Red shirts, you know, rest in peace. Red shirt. You guys know the deal. Red shirts, whatever. Um, you're having a very bad summer burnout concerning your guilt party. Good. We can talk about it. We can definitely look over issues like that. I'm excited about it. Well, not about your burnout, but you know, about dealing with summer burnout issues because I've been dealing with it for years, just years and years and years. What else is in the news? Oh, I was uh, setting up Gary's mod for a uh, stream like, later on. Uh, one of the burnout things that we'll be doing is we... I mean, they've been playing Prop Hunt on Gary's mod. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I've seen a video of it. I'll try to get it set up a little bit earlier today. Uh, but I like I got into this Gary's mod thing earlier and tried to get it running. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. You can summon items and things. So I summoned like a train. I tried to drop a train off person. I tried to you know throw items around. I threw you know a, a helicopter at this other person in the game. Turns out it was an admin. I got banned from the channel or from the server or whatever because I, I got warned for dropping a train onto him. Like what? Come on, this is like a sandbox game. I get to drop trains on everybody. Why don't you just activate God mode or something if you're an admin of the server? So he blinded me and then he kicked me off the server. This is why we can't have nice things. Hello, yes, Natsu, hello. Showing off your Ashbringer? Me too. Me too. Are we playing with you, Sparty? Ah, I don't see why not. Uh, Marksman runs it. Yeah, it's like a prop hunt game. I'll try to stream it, get it all set up. <laughs> Meowzers, welcome back. Thanks for subbing. Much appreciated. Cheers, Meowzers. Apple juice this time. You guys might have so many got game modes, it's funny. I've never played, like, I've never done that kind of stuff. But now that I don't have to work on Sundays, and we've got Coach's Corner, you know, it'll be a nice quick one today, hopefully. And, um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So, with Summer Burnout, um, the last couple times, I'm trying to think here. So, Burning Crusade, we were going through Summer, Sunwell, Pre-Nerf Maru, Giant Bitch. That was one of the first times we've had Summer Burnout. Um, what was another time? I'm trying to go through all the expansions now. When we really had terrible summer issues. So Burning Crusade, Sunwell. We also had Black Temple. A lot of burnout issues there. A lot of retirements. I'm going to go fly around now, Natsu. So, goodbye. Um, we had a lot of burnout issues there. I'm going to go to Kalimdor in a sec. Where else? So Black Temple was a really, really big one. There was... I'm trying to think of Wrath. Do we have any burnout issues in Wrath? Maybe with Ulduar and all the lag that was going on there, there was just... I mean, and I told you guys about this a bunch of times, where when Ulduar came out, Flame Leviathan, yeah, Flame Leviathan was so accessible that everybody and their mother and their grandparents were doing Flame Leviathan, which caused a lot of strain on the servers, the instant servers, and the servers lagged to shit. If you were, you know, raiding between Tuesday, Thursday, and like a Monday, which is what we were, the instant servers were so bad. You tried to pull a boss, you were lagged up. That's it, because everybody was in that damn instance. It was one of those free bosses, free loot, everybody's doing it. So for the Heroic Progression Guilds, we had a lot of difficulty just staying alive. I mean, casting any spells. So a fight like Hodir, which you have to defeat in under three minutes, we lagged out. You know, we're like, no, we're not going to beat the timer. Let's uh, wipe it here. You know, it required so much DPS that it just... It was dumb. And the only guilds that made any real progress, you know, guilds like Critical Mass, they raided Friday, Saturdays, when nobody else raided. Those damn dirty college kids. Prop and find Sparty's ego? Not gonna be very hard. 
Sparty, there's some texture problems on my maps and Gary's mod since I use the models from other games. Yeah, I downloaded um, Counter Strike Source uh, add on packs or something, as well as Half Life 2 ones, so hopefully they won't show as corrupted. I, I don't know, Tompa, I don't know. You gonna do XCOM tonight? Yeah, I can do XCOM tonight, sure. I I'd be happy to. And with, speaking of XCOM, we also have a really cool over XCOM overlay. I need to make sure it's loaded up here, but it is awesome. You guys are gonna love it. It is really, really cool. Again, thanks to Emma, of course. Hey, Master of Zero. Yeah, so, uh, we're gonna fly around here. Oh, I can fly here. How do I get out of here? There's a portal. It's been a while. We're gonna be doing a, a Kalimdor flyby this time. Oh, I just fly this way. I'll be fine, right? Yeah, I'll be fine. Totally fine. Yeah, sure, Conrad. I, I, yeah, if you want to stay up, I uh, sure. I, I don't see why not. I'll vouch for you. You can play with our guys here. Remember to, to at least start the source games, so there's no errors. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about, GFM. I really have no friggin' clue. So with um, with burnout, I mean, we've had so many issues where we, we just had a, a tight roster. I'll sort of give you some examples and some pictures of where we were running a skeleton crew. Find my archive in a sec here. Archive. Nope, that's not it. Where's my old news? So in the older news section, um, this is just our old, old, old page here. Uh, our old archive page from like 2009. What is casual dar recruitment? Uh, yeah, attunements. Old kills here. I mean, we have a lot of these posts, you know. Here, even in Ulduar, I reused this old Nax recruitment post where this could be you. You know, I had a lot of just find clever ways to recruit. You know, I needed to find different ways to recruit. You know, here was a kill from our Anub, um, 40 man Nax. Old school, where's Sparty? Sparty's, I think, no, is that me? I can't remember. That could be me, that might not be. I honestly can't recall where I'm standing here. Uh, but probably one of these two paladins. I think it's this guy in the full judgment. I'm pretty sure that was me. In any case, you know, we sort of shaded out these people and said, you know, this could be you. Do you want to be part of this raiding team? And that was a very effective recruitment ad that we had there. Um, you know, we just had a ton of recruitment ones like that. There's a kill Jaden, Sunwell, Moor. See here. <laughs> uh, we did it like the same thing again. This was June 2008. We did the same thing in 2009. Um, yeah, just non-stop stuff like that. Uh, here's one thing we did. After all content was done, we all got together with other guilds, and we did the the war bears, where you have to kill the, the, the leaders. You know, you need to do some kind of things just outside of raiding. So, this is mostly directed to raiding guilds, but you have to be more than just a raiding guild to survive. Right? How many just raiding guilds have fallen apart? A lot of them, you know, a lot of the ones, even the top end raiding guilds, where's Nilum these days? You know, where's those guys that used to have, you know, top world rankings, whatever? They were raiding guild, guilds, they were competitive, SK Gaming, the, those curse guilds, whatever. Yeah, they were successful in their own right, but where are they? I guess they were after something a little bit different than just, you know, the guild atmosphere. Just being under the name, competitive sports, whatever, that's fine. But to really last in the game, you need something more than that. You need that brotherhood, that camaraderie, being part of a gaming community, or just a group of friends, right? It's not enough to just be raiders. I, one of the things that I really, really hate, raid loggers. They log on for the raid, that's it. You see them for, you know, let's say we're progressing four hours for four days. You see them for 16 hours a week, that's it. You know, you might see them when they do their farm plots or whatever, or when they, I mean, they don't play all, they have that one character, and then they go play other games, they go play so League of Legends or Dota or whatever in the meantime. I like the guys that are there doing stuff, the guys that are going to play Prop Hunt with us tonight, the guys that play, I mean, I have a whole list of things here that we've been playing together. We've been playing, what, Diablo, we have a whole Diablo guild together just for the guild. Right, even with you guys, you know, you guys are part of the Diablo Guild. I haven't played Diablo in you know, a couple weeks now because it's just, I don't know. It's that grind. It's that grind of Diablo. Uh, what other games we play? We played, Cub was in here the other day. He said, hey, let's play Settler 7. Clarendon, myself, him, um, 
And I think one other guy played Settler 7 together. Uh, it's not Settlers of Catan, but it's, you know, it's like the old school Settlers kind of games where you build a build um, an economy and farms and churches, and then you build units and you take over each other's um, territories. And I mean, it's a fun little game like that. Probably played at some point again on stream. We've played games like Civ 5 together. You know, Hensington, Aloria, Dead Man, the four of us played a while ago. And it was a super late night um, Civilization 5 game, so most of the guys didn't last. Like we had, what, 90 second term li turn limits, and you just have to go, go, go. And of course, I, I destroyed Aloria because I was a ruthless bastard. And this other time, Hensington, as the Chinese, of course, had his religious influence, like that makes any sense, on us sticking over our cities. Yeah, like here, Botcher says, you play Smite among other games of the guild. Good, you need to, you need to. Like, they're, they're just not raiders. They're going to have to be your friends. And the stronger that bond between raiders, between guild members, the more effective your team is going to be. Because that's what you are, right? You're a team raiding stuff together. Uh, Barkflight or Crossword Bear tweeted me earlier today, you know, I, how do I get back to caring about PvE? Part of me says, you, you can care about PvE, you don't have to, I, I don't give a shit. But, you know what kind of answer is he looking for? Well, how do I get back into PvE? What is PvE all about? Yeah, I mean, to some people it's about killing dragons or getting those purple shinies from, you know, wherever. You know, those, those little those upgrades, making your character stronger. But really, you know, the ones that are still playing this game, is it really about the, the realm first? Is it about the, you know... The bosses they kill, fuck. I've killed Onyxia how many times? In Classic, in Cataclysm, and then again, in Blacking Descent. I've killed her so many times, there's so many plot holes, lore holes, I, I mean, I, I just give up with lore. I just give up. It, there's so many issues with content, like, it, there's bugged encounters, it's okay, you know, there's, there's plenty of bugs in AQ42. But it's about who you raid with, you know, it's the journey to get there. For those of you that have seen me, you know, wipe on Heroic Leishen all those hundreds of times, or wipe on Paragons and Siege Crafter and Garage, you know, those of you that were stuck there, watching attempt after attempt after attempt, eventually, you know, some of you joined the guild after, after those, not sure why, uh, but you guys saw what it took, you were there, you felt it, you felt it being part of a progression guild, and it, it, not to knock Methan and the other Bludgeon guys, they're fantastic guilds, but you don't see the same level of progression because they don't stream their progression. You know, they don't see stream their grind. But here you feel it. You feel like an epic story. You're part of the team learning and wiping and like, ah, oh, god damn it, why do they stand in shit again? Damn it, Tank died. Damn it, Towley. Right? You feel part of it. And that's what you need to feel part of when you're part of the guild. Yeah, F Ani. Of course. Of course. What if you get too close to friends? Isn't it harder to replace them if you're holding you back? Good question. Yeah, but that's what the raid leader is there for. You know, you have this, you have your guild leaders, your raid leaders, your officers. Your your guild leader is there to make sure the guild functions. They're the ones that over doing the overall picture of the guild. You know, leading them in the right direction. Your raid leader is there to get the shit done. You know, I, I fortunately or unfortunately have both hats sometimes, um, and this is to Chief, Chief Greenleaf. You know, I have to have that hat of yes, I've got to keep the guild motivated and going. But I also have to be the ray leader. I have to make the hard decisions of, hey, you know what? Sometimes I've had to send my friends out. My best friends in real life, I've had to sit them out because we just didn't need that many mages. Because my best friend wasn't performing. I had to sit them out. Then what? You put a bit of a strain on, you know, our relationship. But, you know, it is a game. And my job there as a raid leader is to kill bosses no matter what. You know, if I have to hurt feelings, tough shit. I'm there to, bo to, uh, to kill bosses. Your friends are going to be your friends regardless, you know. If they're really going to get a butt hurt over, you know, being swapped out. What if you were playing, you know, a, I don't know, even like a minor league hockey team. If you have to sit on the bench a little bit, that's totally fine. You know, you're part of the team. You're still contributing. Sometimes you got to sit out and people have to realize that. And that's fine. Yeah, like, Oak doesn't raid with us anymore, but he's still a friend, you know. Your friends are your friends regardless. You're still haunted by the many balls of Leishen. Me too. Many, many balls of Leishen. You get a little story about doing Le Dark Shaman's heroic because it was so hard. Nine shot it. Fantastic. Sounds about like how we did. We had like seven, eight, nine attempts too. You could play the World of Drainer Alpha with your guildies. You're right. You could. 
if we had it, I don't believe any of my guildies besides Towley actually have that damn World of Drainer Alpha. Who knows? Something might happen next week. And then, you know, things will change. We'll do some dungeons. Thanks, Work Dog. I'm glad you left the overlay. So, I remember you telling us a couple of websites where players can find a guild with similar goals and progress, but I can't remember the names of them. It is a lot of progress here, like Freezing here has, has shown you. I'll go over those kinds of things in a bit. Um, so, I mean, what other games can they play together? You know, we've talked about, you know, Diablos and um, what are the multiplayer? StarCraft. We, we played tons of StarCraft games together, like the old StarCraft, or when StarCraft 2 came out. A bunch of us just played free-for-all maps. We're all terrible. Like, none of us are really good StarCraft players. You know, I would amass this big Protoss army of carriers. Somebody else would get Thors, you know. Really, their biggest mistake was always just not letting me... Or letting me survive, right? They would attack me like, no, no, no. It's Sparty. He's our friend. You know, he's our GM. Let's not kill Sparty. Because they would start rushing me at first. And then they would leave me. They would let, let me live. And then I amassed this entire army, and I would just annihilate everybody. No mercy. You know, that was their first mistake. Uh, Ganner, I can check for you, sure. Sure, sure, Ganner. Actually, uh, maybe Lori can do that. Maybe Lori can do that. Ganner. Yeah, Sears isn't playing with us tonight, unfortunately, but that's too bad. I don't know who's playing. Um, I think Conrad's going to play with us, Aloria. So, so someone will have to set up Conrad. Am I doing any subflex today? I'm not sure. Uh, tomorrow for sure. Tomorrow, what am I doing? I'm doing a normal horde run, as well as some aligned subflex raids, but likely not tonight, Tittle Ponage. Yeah, and you know, we played, what, Warcraft 3 together too, Chinglish and I, and you know, of course I won, but we had that one cheating bastard that kept spawning stupid wisp bases all over the place. What a jerk. What a giant jerk. Um, other things we've done in the summer, you know, I used to have this giant sausage fest. I have the, the I mean, I'm Polish, Polish sausage, they're absolutely delicious. Just ask anyone that's, that's dated me. Um, the, yeah, I, got, I cook a good sausage, I do. So what we would do is, at, sometime in the summer, uh, during this entire summer burnout, you know, even partly through progression sometimes, when I lived back in Ontario, I would have these big sausage fest. And basically, you know, I would cook sausage and burgers and, and steaks and chicken or whatever people wanted. And, you know, it would be my co-workers, my friends, people from the guild, you know, would fly down, would drive down from wherever. Um, what, a couple years ago, I had Alicon with the Paladins fly from Texas, so all the way to, like, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, Mayuki drove 13 hours from Wisconsin. I've had people fly across, you know, from Singapore, you know, for this famed sausage. And there's always some good pictures on Facebook. For those um but no i mean people would just you know i had blacks jeff from quebec i've had people like uh megwin megwin one of our old red paladins fly in from new york like we had people from all over uh guildies like it was our own little sort of blisk on our own little meetup you know have a couple drinks play some beer pong we were totally fine cute creepy sausage comments yes 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 that's right thanks freezing so that's one thing we would do, you know, those get-togethers in real life, you're like, holy shit, you know, I've been hanging out with these guys for how long, how many years, and now I finally get to meet them, that is a really cool feeling. And that's really the best thing about BlizzCon, for those of you that are going or thinking about maybe going, BlizzCon's okay, you know, BlizzCon's not bad, content-wise, it's okay, you know, I, I felt a little bit bored during BlizzCon, you know, I explored everywhere, we played some demos, but the best part is just hanging out with everybody. You know, just walking around, playing um, Heroes of the Storm together and losing terribly because, you know, most of your team is really bla bad, as, you know, especially yourself. Um, yeah, like, it, it was just great hanging out. You know, at the end of BlizzCon, we were just hanging out in the lobby, having a drink. We recruited one of our players, one of our Shadow Priests, Valkyrie, that you guys see in raids now. We actually found him at BlizzCon. We were all sitting down in the lobby. He's like, hey, can I have a seat here? And he showed us this big-ass sword or, or hammer or frostmore or whatever he had. I can't remember now. And then, uh, you know, started talking about what class do you play, what race do you play. Oh, you're a dirty hordy. So we made fun of him a little bit. You know, it was myself, Driaz, uh, Lurchy, and Kira. And I think Lumerax and Karyuto were there too. So we had a bunch of guildies. And so they started, you know, talking, talking, talking. And then Driaz finds out he's a Shadow Priest. I'm like, oh, here it goes. So Driaz, you know, starts talking to him, starts girling him, and, you know, starts giving him, like, actual app interview questions. And she's like, why can't all apps answer these questions right? They're all terrible. 
So we're like, you know, we extended an open invitation to him, said, hey, you know, if you're ever looking for a guild, here you go. You know, here's our information. Here's my business card. Take that. And he applied to the guild later on, really undergeared, but new as shit. We knew from BlizzCon. So I gave him a shot, and now he's a full member. There you go. Sparty, did you get my message? Yeah, I, yes, yes, I did. I did. Yeah, but the Sausage Fest, of course. So you have those meetups. I mean, I've played hockey with Oaf. Oaf is actually a really good hockey player. Uh, goal scorer, puck handler, he's awesome. Like, I, I'm really terrible, uh, and I need to get back into hockey now. Need, but it's so freaking expensive here, Oaf. Like, it's $700 to join an, a, like a league as a free agent, so I need to find a team. It's ridiculous. But they pay, play, like, 15, 15, uh, like, three 15-minute periods, so... Anyway, no, Horde is not best. Sparta, you talk about being a dirty Horde, but now we were the ones who brought your alliance together. <laughs> okay, Bolvar. Okay. Hey there, Dregar. Hello, guys. Most of your team is what? Is it really black? I, I don't understand, Jack Henry. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sparta... Uh, Sparty is actually so bad that he doesn't realize that Oaf is really terrible. He's good. You know, if you want to get far, you play hockey, for sure. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we did so much. you got to keep that team together. And guys that I haven't raided with forever, you know, I see Black Saw log in. You know, it's a community that we've grown here. That's, I mean, I, I've been on the forums last couple days, and I go on the, the general forums, and I know they're a giant cesspool. I know MMO champion, same kind of cesspool. We're just, like, idiots talking and sometimes there's decent content there. Sometimes you find a needle in haystack. And there's all these guys that are talking about, you know, having the right guild. Guilds that are, you know, not just elitist assholes, you know, but they're good raiders, they're good people. And I'm like, you know what? They're looking for my guild. But it's a secret. They're, you know, they have to earn their way in. That's why it's, it's not open to everybody. You know, we have a really selective recruitment process. We've had, excuse me, thousands of apps over the years. Absolutely thousands. How many have gotten in? A few hundred. You know, over the eight, nine years, just a few hundred. That's it. You know, people generally will stay for a couple years of raiding before they move on in real life. Or they're just, you know, they're done with the game, right? Or whatever excuse they, they find to to leave uh, the game. But they stay within the guild. I mean, they're, they still visit the forums. A bunch of us are just playing Wildstar now. You know, Blacksaw and I still hang out. Uh, and Black is one of my officers. Uh, we still hang out, you know, on Skype, or we, we just chat, how's it going, you know, he's, what, he's married now? I don't know, he's engaged at least. I talked to him, like, the other day, I should have asked him. I told him my plans anyway. Uh, what else? We've got people that say, Lux of Stranger, oh. Once in a while, there's a glitch in the system, case point me, well, you know, darn it, Don's been with us for how long? Eight years? Technically? You've technically been with us for eight years, you know, in spirit, Darnath, at least in spirit, with that curse. So Darnath here is one of our oldest members, too. Oaf, you know, a lot of those guys. I have people that haven't logged on in years. Guild status, you know, last online. It's a damn thing here. You know, seven years, some of these guys. Melanie, one of our original officers. Uh, Gabriel, you know, Rootleaf's friend, who also one of our raid leaders. He was not bad. There's Melanie, six years. You know, Silly being one of our officers, too. Old raiders. Some come back, some don't. They're still part of the guild, though. They may not log into Warcraft ever again. They moved on from things. You know, Atma, one of our best raid leaders, he's moved on years ago. He still logs on now. He still comes to flex raids. You know, he... Does transmog runs with us? He was a fantastic raid leader, but these guys, you know, are still part of the guild. You know, lots of little odds here, but you know, a lot of the retired guys like Thorbear, he was, you know, our <laughs> uh, he was our Swedish player. He was our Swedish death knight. He played with us, Sunwell Preener of Muru, old school guys, right? Dilvish, this was one of my real life friends too. Hasn't been on in two years. But he's gotten married now, he's moved on, still came on to say hello two years ago. It's like, hey, this guild's still together? Yeah. For sure. So, uh, things. I mean, wh what else do you do besides those meetups? Let's say you're a raiding guild. Um, and I really, I mean, I guess we can cover that in a sec, but what else can you do to alleviate the burnout, the boredom of people leaving? Yeah, it's warm out there. You know, the sun sets at 9 o'clock now, and I, I know the, really, the background is really bad sometimes. 
here's the good thing about, and bad thing about the summer. The good thing, it gives people a break. The smart ones, they realize there's way more out there than there is in here. Those are the smart ones. So you try to keep all the dumb ones together. Just keep them raiding in your guild. Because, yeah, I mean, real life, you know, has its perks too. And, you know, this is a good hobby and, a, you know, a good little sport and, and gathering. But you, you know, part of me just thinks if I give them too much of a break, they're going to realize that the grass is actually really green outside. It's friggin' summer. And they may not come back. Which makes my job as a guild leader, as a recruiter, much more difficult. <laughs> So, I, you know, I give them breaks here or there. You know, one thing we do as a, you know, we clear 14 out of 14 Heroic every week. Fantastic. Great. You know, that's not too impressive because a ton of guilds do it. Some guilds do it in under three hours. So, you guys are raiding for 16 hours a week. These guys clear everything in three hours. They're really efficient. They're good at what they do. What do I do? Clay, thanks for subbing. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks a ton. Uh, and, yeah. Remember, ask Tally to sponsor you, not me. <laughs> Recruit me, he says. Now I lost my train of thought. Oh, for raiding. So, yeah, we could clear everything in one day. But my preference has always been to spend more time with my raiders. So we raid two days a week. Fairly light days. You know, we clear, what, 12, 13 out of 14 heroics um, on Tuesday. And then we finish up with the garage on Wednesday. Some guilds want to do it in one day, and then you have six days off, fine. But I'd rather have my guild, my teammates, stay together longer. I mean, we used to raid, what, four days a week during progression? It's probably going to be three days during World of Uh But these guys have earned the break, you know? They've made a lot of sacrifices in real life and personal relationships and, you know, potentially school or whatever. They deserve a break. If they don't want to log on, you know, every, every friggin' day, they don't have to. You know, they're definitely not obligated to it. Once again, answer your text here from Drias. It's a pretty good question. I joined my heroic progression gear guild and uh, as a social, and they want me to raid with them in the next content. But they want me to DPS, and I'm a main tank. I really want to raid as a tank, but I can't with this guild. What should I do? You know, do you really want to be part of this guild? Well, there's always the opportunity of you off tanking. That's always your foot in the door. Why is it so red here? Um, yeah, that is always your foot in the door of, you know, potentially tanking. Tank is sick. You know who steps up? Venturino does. Because you've got your tank gear ready. You know how to tank still, right? Even though you're DPSing. You're not doing what you really want to do, but you're doing what will benefit the guild the most right now. I've, you know, I've told the other tanks the same thing. Like, you may have to tank, you may have to DPS, have a DPS off spec ready. Right? Sometimes an encounter requires three tanks. Who's to say that Mythic Encounters and World of Draenor will not require three tanks. Sometimes one tank. We don't know. I mean, Blizzard messes that shit up all the times. Why only three days in Warlords? Because, I mean, we're getting older. Like, honestly, we used to rate seven days a week. Four, five hours every day. Can you imagine that, guys? For those of you that are older or younger, you know, crowd, six, seven days a week, you are rating four or five hours a day. If you are not raiding, you are preparing for a raid. You are grinding. You guys feel how, how grindy Wildstar is now? For those of you that are big Towley fans, you see him do a lot of grinding and dungeoning and, and constant wiping. That's a lot like old school Warcraft was. You know, a lot like old school EverQuest was too. Now, like, we're getting older though. Like, I'm not in university anymore. I, like, I'm done school. I've moved on. I've got, you know, other relationships and works work that I need to work on and, and stream here. So those things are taking more of a priority compared to rating. You know, now rating has sh really changed dynamically. Now it's a little bit more spreadsheets and prep than it is just nonstop wiping and learning from your mistakes that way. There's so much more prep involved. So to do, I mean, our progression, we don't care so much about, you know, realm first anymore. Like, it's not a big deal to us. You know, can we compete with Blood Runs Cold, which is going to raid five days a week? No, absolutely not. You know, it's how about how much hours you put into raiding. Yeah, the, you know, they're grid raiders too. But really, can we compete with 30 hours a week? No. It's just not worth it, right? And there, there's no point of, you know, well, hey, you know, so-and-so's realm first, so-and-so's realm second. Yeah, but you think of how much time is spent actually raiding, it's much, much less. Take my stream request so I can get a prop on tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. Whatever. In, in a bit. Awkward, in a bit. Oh, we were talking about you. 
Is there a way to increase? Is it too quiet? It shouldn't be too quiet. It should be pretty good. I know I'm not related to any of this guy. Sparty, the progression guild I lead just picked up a member, but after he joined, I was messaged by his previous GM saying he has a bad attitude. I haven't seen myself, but should I kick him anyways? No. No. Of course not. Or wait to see yourself if he's cleaned up? Of course you should wait for yourself. I mean, some... I've had this happen too, you know. Sometimes I recruit a fantastic raider, and their old officer or old guild leader sees they've transferred to my guild, and they're like, you know, you should have done your research. This guy's a terrible, he's a cancer to the guild. I can't believe, you know, a guild like Death just has recruited him. I mean, meanwhile, we did our own research. You know, we generally do our own background searches. <laughs> Conrad, thanks, welcome back. My EU liaison, Trish, Colego, Jinky. Uh, thanks a lot. Oh, I was 16 and had no life. Yeah, see, no, Marksman, back when he joined our guild, he was like 15, 16, lying about his app, or lying about his age on his app. Name, he named his character Babelicious. Like, I'm disgusted even saying that. Babelicious. What is it, playing Leisure Suit Larry? Come on. Come on. Um, so, what were we talking about? You keep distracting me. I, I don't know, we were talking about something. Uh, oh, your guild, yeah. So, we've done our own research, you know, should you kick him right away? Of course not. You know, you figure out for yourself, you do some more research on him, and if he turns out to be a bad apple, turns out to be a bad apple. Big deal. But some guild leaders, some officers, are really butthurt that he's leaving their old crappy guild and joining your awesome guild. That's it. They just want to make trouble. Those are the shitty guild leaders. Whatever. And not only that, not only did he name his character Babelicious, and, you know, he's 15, 16 years old, and he lied on his app, which is, I, I totally approve of, by the way. Um, he was a forum troll. Like, his app feedback was three pages of, this guy's a giant forum troll, he's an elitist asshole. Like, why are we giving him a shot? But I knew, I knew that this marksman guy might turn into a decent human being someday. And here we are, eight years later, the marksman's raiding with us. New layout? Any excellent tonight? Yeah, with a new layout as well. Oh, man. It does. Yeah, Leisure Suit Marksman, exactly. So, we have those things that we do. Um, yeah, keep asking your questions here as they, they go on. Well, I don't have better kick. Um, I mean... I have a thread now on our forums of what do you guys want to do for the summer? We have tons of ideas. In the past, we've done th things like prop hunt, but in Warcraft, we've done hide and seek things. It's actually a lot more fun playing hide and seek as an adult than you would think, because you haven't played it in 20 years, or however old you are. Maybe you guys are, you know, 12 and you haven't played it in three years. But hide and seek is pretty fun. You know, we've had pet battle tournaments. Uh, those ones, yeah, those ones actually worked pretty well. Uh, we put even, you know, even put in gold. You make your own team. I always came, I don't know, like fourth or fifth. I always lost these stupid pet battle tournaments to Ariana. Um, we've had war games. So with war games, what is the command for war games again? Here. With war games, you find, you know, an equal number of players or whatever in your guild. You make two teams, make two captains, put them against each other. You guys are terrible at PvP? That's okay. You're all terrible at PvP. Or find two really good people, make them the captains. Do Warsaw and Gulch, you know, be on Ventril or TeamSpeak together. You know, we could do this as a stream too. We could have like a, an awesome eight. Fuck, you know what? That'd be awesome. Having an AV, I wonder if that would work. Do I need people cross realm? I don't know if that works cross realm. Uh, but yeah, I would love to do war games too. Ultrac Valley, like summon some giants. That would be fun as balls. Like I can't remember, can't remember the last time I summoned an ice giant or did those Ultrac Valley quests. It's been so long. What else? War games, other games. Yeah, I mean, we've played other games together. You have to. Like, we have a good group of people. And sometimes, you know, you're in a raid. You get frustrated with each other. Marksman dies on the assembly line belt again. Aloria screwed up on Paragons, or she's the wrong spec for Garage. You know what? Bad raider. But, at the end of the day, you know, people make mistakes. I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Neither are my raiders. I, it's unreasonable to expect perfection. And, you know, that's one of my faults there, where I expect too much sometimes of my raiders. 
But at the end of the day, we're still friends. You know, we still hang out on stream here. You know, in game chat, we do flex raids. You know, that's it. You know, you have your raiding, and then you have your your fun time, your business time, and then your fun time. AV isn't PvP. It's about PvE. Well, that's why I love it. That's why. I like to do my guild draw my thing. What? What is draw my thing? And is this related to your thing in Babylicious? I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. We just call it Tuesday. <laughs> oh, man. So there's always things you can do. Uh, but thinking about recruitment and raiding. So you know it's summer. Let's say you've had people retire. And, you know, this is my situation. Let me find it here. My situation. Let me find it. Season's greetings. Okay, I'm not showing it. Um, Christmas cards. Yes, I'll send out your stupid Christmas cards. I'm getting on it. Those of you here. Uh, there's my Ashbringer. Uh, here. You know, here in 2007, this was October, so this was just post-summer burnout, and we're having a really, really rough time. Uh, there's here, me with myself the rest of the time. There is Melanie, there is, I think, Mayav somewhere here. I can't remember who this was exactly. Um, you know, we, had, we were running a skeleton crew there. I made sure to thank those skeleton crews. I told them, hey guys, we have like 25 people in the guild right now that are able to raid. I appreciate you guys making those extra sacrifices to make sure you're able to log in. You know, like I, we have, we're so short people. You guys know how hard it is, for those of you who played in Burning Crusade, to attune somebody, to get them keyed for Black Temple and Hyjal and all those other damn places. It was a huge investment. And so the guild kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller as people, you know, started retiring as they left for the summer. It was a bitch. But, you know, you made sure to thank those, that skeleton crew. So, what, October 15th here, October 31st. So, it took us, what, two weeks to kill Illidan? That's not bad. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. How are you? Uh. She's there. Yeah, those are fun times. Oh, yeah, and here, they killed, uh... <laughs> here they killed, uh, Archimond without me. After so many uh, blood, sweat, and tears, all literally for this stupid boss... The one night I'm not there, they kill it without me. So I revealed the secret strat. The flying V. That's how they, uh... Yeah. That's how they killed him. Good times. Good times there. Good, good times. Old school. Old school stuff. And Vash, yeah. Fun times in the... Oh, shit. Uh, let's fly back. There we go. Yeah, this is how you discover you can kill Rulo with 23 players. Back in Blackwing Lair, we ran a 40-man raid, right? Here's another problem we had. Everybody wanted loot. You know, people wanted those big, fantastic purples. Except people didn't want to put in the work for, for Blackwing Lair. You know, the big white fest that was Razor Core. So I'd have to trick my guild. I'd have to tell them, hey guys, time for Molten Core, let's go farm loot. 40-man raid joins up, everybody's raring to go. I'm like, ah, tricked you. Take the chain up, we're going to Black and Lair, and like, oh man. And, you know, people are like, oh, suddenly I have to go wash my hair. Uh, drop raid. Oh, suddenly my AV queue popped. I have to leave the raid. Just stupid short round, I'll remember that to this day. AV queue popped mid boss, and he left. I had to kill bosses with 36 people. I killed Broodlord, third boss in Black and Lair, with 23 people. It was a shitty night. You know, you gotta deal with it, though. You have to deal with it. You can bitch or you can move on and find a solution. As officers, as raid leaders, as recruitment officers, you guys are solutions designers. Problem solvers. Find a way to deal with it. Don't just bitch. Sure, I mean, bitching can help, especially if you're a woman. But, find the solution. That's it. So, where do you recruit? How do you recruit? Here's the thing. Like, I've told you guys on stream here plenty of times that I'm against poaching. I'm totally against it because I think it's a despicable form of recruitment. And a lot of the top guilds do it. That's fine. They try to poach my players. My players are like, hey, Sparty, you know, I ranked, you know, first on that fight. This guild contacted me. They want me to join their guild. You know what I told them? That's right. And we laugh together. We have a beer. But if it came down to it and my guild is hanging on by a thread 
and you know we're so short staffed we're, we have such a small raid team that we can't get things done and morale is so low i will do whatever it takes to find recruitment or replacement players i will tear apart every single one of your guilds i will find the best players i will convince them to leave your guilds and join my guild in order to save my own guild you have to have that mentality you have to cutthroat yeah but when it comes down to the wire i will do whatever it takes sorry guys but you have to you absolutely have to Is the sound off oh there was there you go here's have some music there you go did i build my own computer yes i did i did i did build my computer oh, let's fly this way so okay Now, in terms of, um, you know, recruitment and dealing with that burnout, I'll give you some examples of what we had to do. So, back in Cataclysm, we had, again, you know, summer burnout, lots of recruitment issues, we couldn't find good players, we had Unsane, this terrible boomkin, that, like, one out of every ten attempts, he would actually do a, a decent pull. He would not die to everything, he wouldn't do terrible DPS. One in ten chance. But I had no replacement players. Recruitment was at an all-time low. And that's one of the biggest struggles here of, um, you know, of raiding and, like, of being in the guild. Our recruitment's always been fairly lackluster until we've really utilized all our resources. And now recruitment's, you know, it's been booming. It's been amazing, especially since we started the streams. Um, yeah, I mean, back in Cataclysm, we are working in Blackwing Descent. We are working on the first couple bosses. But I don't have 25 players on my raid team. I have maybe 23 just because I've had sudden retirements. You know, sudden apps, G quitting. I had one applicant, got into the raid, lasted 15 minutes in Sparty's raid. Then he quit. I think that was the shortest app ever. He <laughs> zoned into Blacking Descent. We told him to drop some totems or res us or not die to the elevator boss. And then he just G quit. Like, he was just so done. Shit happens, deal with it. So how did I deal with it? How did I find that solution? At the same time as us running the 25 men, we were also running a 10 man guild. Oaf was in it, you know, a lot of the old re retired officers were in it. I asked them, I'm like, hey guys, you know, I know a lot of you guys are scared of raiding with Sparty, but I really need you. I really need you guys to help out and, you know, put one together for the, the guild here. Help us out main raid. So they had their own raid, 10 man, we had our 25 men. I said, you know what, I need for two weeks to merge the raids. Give me two weeks to help bolster my numbers by just recruiting non-stop. I would be recruiting three, four hours a day. You know, it's not just scouring the forms, it's talking to people. Tons and tons of recruitment. So, we merged the the teams together. I mean, everybody got a fair shoot, share at loot or something. Like, I mean, it's pretty close to a fair share at loot. Um, you know, they helped us. They helped the guild. The guild was hanging on by a thread. But somehow, those loyal players that we built over the years... They helped us out, you know, and we made it work. And thanks to those guys, those retired guys that you guys don't see too often here, but those guys held the guild together. You took a lot. There is no such thing as, you know, you can't even raid now. There are plenty of opportunities for you guys get to get back into raiding. If you guys were old school, you know, Throne of Thunder raiders, Siege of Orgrimmar raiders, it doesn't matter. You can catch up. I guarantee you can catch up. There is no, I can't do this. I've had people apply multiple guilds multiple times here, like Zundir, to try to get into the guild. They got in eventually. You know, you prove that you're worth it. It's so easy to gear somebody up. If you know your shit, if you know the encounters, if you know your class inside and out. If I could, you know, drill the information and, and you knew it. And you seem like a great player and a great fit and we need your class. And I think you're going to be, you know, great long term. Sure, I'll throw gear at you. But that's a lot of ifs, right? That's a lot of, you know, if, maybe, maybe. Hey there, Dokazil. What are we in need of right now? DPS, mostly. We're not, uh, we're not super desperate for any players. We just downed Thok for the first time. We had one pug DPS and the tier helm dropped and he won the roll and left right after. He got it and our tank needed it. So what? It's just loot. It's gonna drop again. It's a pug. Who cares? You know, back in um, when we got our first Onyxia kill as a guild, we had pugs too. 
we had a bunch of them, and we, we said, yeah, you know, we'll give you guys fair share at loot. You know, you win the roll, you win. We sort of skewed the loot system that way back then because everybody would roll. So they would be rolling for, like, you know, let's say, a healer trinket. All the healers would be rolling for it, and then we would distribute it our own way later. Uh, we lost loot on our very first Nixa kill. I think um, a tier helm, like a Netherwind helm, went to some pug. But they deserved it, they earned it, they did some damage as well. Are <laughs> there Matsu Tsunamis? <laughs> I'm still salty, but Sprouty telling me the first time I had told him I wanted to app. I wish you were a warlock. Because you can tell when someone's going to be a good person and a good player, but sometimes you're just out of luck. You guys wouldn't believe how many hunters I've had just... They're fantastic, but they can't apply. It'd be really hard for me to justify having five hunters. Even four hunters is really tough to run. But having five hunters... I know you're awesome. I'm sure you're a great player. I just don't have room for you. You know, at what point do I say, stop, hold your pets and horses there. I don't have room for you hunters. Try rolling a warlock, because we always have room for them. Darneth. I mean, Oath makes a great point here. Let's say there's two guys. You know, you're undergeared, the other guy is geared. What makes you better than him? Why should we take you as raider? So the one guy that said he uh, took a break from Throne of Thunder and Siege of Rogamar can't raid now. Why should I take you over the other guy that is geared? Give me a good reason. Prove to me why you're better than him. That's all it takes. You know, whether it be a good app, good interview, and a little bit of luck needing that class. I wish you were asses. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Sparty, what if somebody applied to your guild on their main but planned on playing a different class on Drainer? Totally fine with me. If you earn a spot in the guild, uh, between expansions, I don't mind class rerolls. You know, that being said, you're going to be competing for different spots. So, you know, let's say all my hunters want a tank now. So all four hunters are like, you know what, screw that Towley guy. We're going to replace his spot. Okay, well now all four of you are, you know, facing Towley in a cage match, pillow fight. You guys can fight him for a spot. See who's better. But only one of you make it. It's a big risk there if you really, really want to tank with Psycho and the big boys. <laughs> when will the flex raids begin? Uh, probably not tonight. Um, today we're doing some prop hunt or something. I don't know. I'll figure that out. Uh, we'll be doing flex raids tomorrow though, Meowsers. Tomorrow we have a horde normal run and sub-alliance flex raids. So we'll do a bunch. That's the decision he takes, exactly. Exactly that. Yeah, and here Ganor says, you know, he applied once, but it took him six months. He followed the stream for a while, you know, he was always asking questions, he was talking to our hunters, but he built up his stuff, you know, he eventually got into it. Uh, what else? I mean, really rewarding your skeleton crew, you know, making sure you're really appreciative of those few guys that are are actually raiding you know make sure they're they really feel like they're contributing i mean they are because they're the only ones that are able to show up and you know you have 24 raiders you're waiting for your last to log on please log on you know don't be late otherwise you're screwed for that night it sucks being in that position but a lot of guilds are uh although the application speaks so much i recently got into a fourth best three the raiding guild their DPS ahead of me for now, but purely because my app was well written, the lack of heroic experience, like worst parses for something they were willing to chance. There you go. The good guilds, they are definitely willing to chance that. They see potential, you know. We are definitely looking for those diamonds in the rough. Sure, you've got, you know, you got some experience, but are you like that fantastic player? Are you, you know, that typical Asian math whiz that is a min maxer? Sorry, I'm not a racist, but min maxer, and, you know, we make generalizations, whatever, but. Do we take that player? Is he going to be a good fit? Is he going to be a great DPS player if we just throw some gear at him? Maybe his add-ons are holding him back. Maybe his he just has terrible keybinds. You know, sometimes that's all that's blocking these people from becoming really fantastic raiders. It's ready for the normal horde run. If you get to Thok, I don't think we're going to get to Thok. I think we're going to be getting to, like, Iron Juggernaut again. Depends on our gear level, Slade. 
Any advice on new players? What were you looking for, Calm Dirty Mike? Um, now, in terms of rating, so there's a couple of rating tips for you guys. Sometimes you need to take a break. You're stuck on a wall in progression, it is totally okay to take a break. Let's say you're down on recruitment, you have those 25 raiders, that's it. You might take a week off, it's totally fine. But do fun stuff! Don't just take a break from raiding, that can really lower your morale. You know, people are like, okay, well, we're taking a break from raiding, I really want to raid, you know, should I start looking at options elsewhere? People are thinking that, I, I guarantee they are. You know, they're definitely thinking, you know, what else can I do? So what are you doing? as officers, as veterans of the guild, as guild leaders, to keep those players in the guild. Again, do those fun things. Pet battles, PvP, arena, playing other games together. If your guild members are your friends, they are much, much, much less likely to leave your guild. If they're just people that show up for whatever, they have very little loyalty. And loyalty is one of the biggest or most important qualities that any guild leader officer are looking for. Players that are just wearing Warcraft and looking to get good raiders, do some research. You know, watch streamers play, ask them questions about their class, but learn through experience and making mistakes. Calm dirty Mike. Here's some good resources for you, right here. Icy veins and all. There you go. What time the Horde normal run will start? Uh, sometime in the evening. I don't know, like, are you guys good around 6 Pacific for it? Any chance for EU stuff soon? Not tonight. Yeah, not tonight. My camera distance should be... My graphics... Yeah, my view distance is... Oh, there you go. There, you happy? Enjoy. Um, yeah, but sometimes you have to give them a, you know, some time off. Take a week off. You're stuck on a progression boss. What else do you do? You know, uh, there's some item levels where it's okay to to start extending lockouts. We extended lockouts on Garage. I think on Paragons we extended one as well. But it was up to like, hey, we don't need gear here. We just need the practice. That's all it's going to take. So when we were around 571 item level, we were working on Paragons, worked on it for about a week or so, maybe two weeks. And then I said, you know what? We're extending lockouts now. You guys want gear? Too bad. We have plenty of gear here. Now just practice. More gear, and here's the argument people want to make, you know, more gear is going to help us, it's going to help DPS. Yeah, you know, it, it'll help you, that 0.1%, that 50 DPS, sure. Is more gear going to help you stay out of rapid fire? No. No, it's not. Is more gear going to help you stay out of those orange puddles, getting charged, communicating better, not getting hit by aim, whatever? Is it going to help? Absolutely not. Sure, you'll have more HP, so you can stand in this shit longer. But that's all practice. It's muscle memory. It's better reaction times. Gear will not help. That experience will. Perfect, Mulia. That's perfect. Do some of the stuff on the Wind Market Monkey got. What do you mean, Matt Freeman? Hey, Dixie. We're doing an interview today? Potentially. Potentially. I'm going to do a bit of a prop hunt game... Uh, with my my gillies here, but we'll see how much time I have. So, with recruitment, there is that. There is giving your guys a break. There is giving your, your your raiders a break. Sometimes don't give them too much of a break. Um, you can do days off. Other possibilities. I guess you could play alts too. You know, you might bring alts to raid. I've always despised that. I've always despised bringing alts to raid. It brings so much drama and favoritism and crap like that. I've pretty much never allowed alts to raid unless they're actually beneficial to my raid. You know, a couple times where I've made exceptions, doing um, Ragnaros and Firelands. On that fight specifically, you know, we really needed a boomkin, so Mayuki played his boomkin shaman, or his, his boomkin uh, for us instead of his shaman. We needed him then. He was probably one of the best Boomkins we ever had. And now I guess we have Zoom here ish or so. Um, yeah, but alts, slippery slope, be careful with alts. Um, you know, we might do that at some point here during the summer. We may, like, if I have a, a new thing coming up here where I do Raiders of the Week, 
So, like, I go through Parses, the most improved person, the person that's died the least, the guy that's not scumbagging but doing their job, you know, again, like, most improved Parses, you're, you're steadily improving, or ranking, like, you know, number one in the world on a certain fight, not by scumming, but by doing, you know, a great job and getting a little lucky, that's fine. Uh, so I give them, you know, a little shout out, a little blurb about them, talk about them a little bit, and give them a good pat on the back. You know, maybe we'll allow them to get gold or something as a reward, but some extra kind of motivation for really not becoming complacent during the summer. And that's part of, you know, being in farm, right? People get complacent and lazy, and they, you know, stop trying as hard, not giving their best. And that's when you start working on farm content. The only time we allow all to remain raids when we're putting normal normal needs gear, I suppose. But then, how do you decide which alts should go? You know, what item level is okay? What DPS number is okay? I've never seen this tornado before, ever in my life. Where is this place? I've actually never been here. Huh. Expecting a cow to fly by anytime. Anytime now. Uh, but no, I mean, give your guys the break if they need it, you know, let them relax. Sometimes it's okay to take a week off of progression and just do farm content again. Let's say you guys are stuck on Garage, and Garage is a bit of a bitch, right? It takes, you know, a few weeks, uh, you need to get it down really, really, really well, like the muscle memory has to get down there. If you've wiped, you know, 200 times to Garage, and you've been extending lockouts every time just to get the attempts in, take a week off. Clear all farm content again. Make some people happy by getting, you know, those extra three pieces of gear. Because by the time you are doing Garage, you're disenchanting most of your gear. You know, a good percentage of the gear disenchanting unless it's Heroic Warforged. So. Tornado's been there for two years. Well, I've never seen it. I, I never fly down here. So. What defines scumbag DPSing? Great question. What defines scumbag DPSing? There are three Paragons up on when you do Paragons of Klaxi. You DPSing all three of them and just topping the meters because you can, when it hurts your single target DPS, that's called scumbagging DPS. Okay? If topping the meters, but you are doing you are doing your best rotation single target, you're maximizing your DPS single target on the one guy that you need to DPS, but you're cleaving other shit, that's okay. That's totally fine. When you're doing Paragons and you're waiting for Corvin to land and you have Parasites up or you have, you know, other things to attack, that's okay to scumbag. But you don't waste, you know, important DPS. 